Welcome to the Pen to Publish podcast with your hosts, Alexa Witten, author, typesetter and independent publisher, and Alexa Tewksbury, author, editor and proofreader. Hi, and welcome to episode three of the basic series one of the Pen to Publish podcast. And today it's all about children's books. Now, we're not going into the editing side of things or the typesetting side of things or even the selling side of things in this series. As you know, this is basically just all of the pre-work that you need to do. And Alexa One, who is a children's book editor, is going to be explaining what you need to be doing, what you need to be looking out for, who you need to be writing for, why that's important when it comes to writing children's books, because they're segmented into different reading categories. And Alexa is going to be explaining what those categories are in terms of who you're writing to. So I'm going to hand over to Alexa One, and she's going to talk us all the way through what you need to know if you're going to be writing a children's book. Anyways, I think the first thing to say is the importance of understanding the different categories when you're writing for children and for teens. If you walk into Waterstones in the UK, you'll see these categories very clearly defined for you with big signs. There's a preschool age group. There's then a five to eight year old age group, a nine to 12 year old age group. And then you come into the teen and YA category and upwards. And those are those are quite broad age group categories, because obviously there's there's a huge difference, for example, between a nine year old and a 12 year old. Um, those are the guidelines to think about when you're thinking about word count, all those different things involved in writing a book. I'm just going to jump in. Sorry. YA means young adult in case those that didn't understand oh, yes. what YA it was. So that's young adult. It probably sounds obvious, but knowing your age group is critical when it comes to writing for children. So last week we talked about targeting your writing appropriately, and arguably this is even more relevant when producing books for young readers in terms of, as I say, the subject matter, the vocabulary, the characterization, the book length sentence structure, word count, and type and quantity of illustration. The first writing course I did years ago emphasized the importance of researching the market you want to write for. So if you want to write for children and teens, the best thing you can do is go to your local bookshop and browse the shelves. Look at which authors are there and the types and lengths of books for the different age groups. Look at what's on the display tables. What's the bookshop promoting? All those things will give you a really good idea of what people are buying. And you need to know that. You need to know what people are interested in. So for younger age groups, it's very likely that it'll be the parents and the grandparents who are buying for their children. So what do they want to be reading to their children? What did they enjoy reading or having read to them as children that's still out there? Now, interestingly, my daughter told me about an interview she listened to with uh, Julia Donaldson, who wrote The Gruffalo. And Julia Donaldson pointed out how hard the picture book market is to break into because parents are doing the buying, parents Mm. and grandparents, Mm. and they want their children to experience the books that they themselves loved as children. So, you know, the books that have been around for years and made them feel a particular way. And that's why there are so many classic books being bought and rebought through the generations. You've got The Gruffalo, The Tiger Who Came to Tea by Judith Kerr. You've got Dogger by Shirley Hughes, The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Zeus, Eric Hill's Spot the Dog series. There's such a huge list of incredibly familiar and beautiful books. And that's just in the picture book market. And people still want to be buying those books. But, but, you know, that's not to say that you should be put off by the competition. But at the same time, do be aware that writing for children isn't an easy option. It's actually incredibly tough. So no matter how simple you might feel some children's books are, it's really not that easy. But let's look a little more in detail at the various age group categories. And as Alexa said, this is just intended as an overview. It's a starting point when it comes to writing for children. So point is to think about to help you target your writing. So the first category I mentioned is preschool. Now here you're looking at picture books. So lots of illustration on every page and a minimal word count. And as a rule, no more than 500 words, but I would say 600 to 700 absolute maximum. So your story, it's be possible to tell it within that word count. And the format for for a picture book published by a mainstream publisher is usually 32 pages. 
and a lot of those will be double page spreads with the illustration going over both pages. And, and with a book, you obviously get the copyright information at the front and maybe end page matter as well. So you don't necessarily have all 32 pages to play with, but that's the kind of page count, so the maximum to aim for. Now, picture books are largely created to be read to very young children by an adult. So the illustrations take on even more importance. Not only do they help to convey the story, but they're also a talking point to engage children with what's being read to them. And if a child is learning to read, the pictures offer clues to help them with the words that they're seeing. And then you've got to think about what you write about. What are young children interested in? What do they like to do and talk about? The ideas don't have to be complex. The daily rhythms of life are incredibly important to young children. So stories can be as simple as a trip to the shops or, or to pick up an older brother or sister from school. They're also... I'm just going to just quickly jump in here. Also, environmental matters. I've just done a picture book that's all about a turtle who goes swimming across the Atlantic and all the rubbish that she comes across in the sea. And it's aimed at preschoolers, but it talks about environmental issues. Now, earlier when you were talking about people like classics, but the classic books don't necessarily deal with problems that children are facing today social media problems, even at preschoolers, you know, people online, all of that, parents splitting up. I did another book that was all about how staying at daddy's house at the weekend rather than being with mummy and daddy. So if you're clever, you can look at factors that are appropriate for today and that's your angle. Yes, I totally agree with your what do children like to read about, but also it can be a great tool to introduce any big social problem that's going on at the moment, like uh oh flow that I talked about, the turtle and the situation of the plastic in the sea. I mean, fantastic way to bring that into picture book format and education at the same time. So I just thought I'd quickly add that in and I'll in the show notes, I'll uh, link the two books that I've mentioned. Yes, 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 definitely. And you'll see later on when we talk about the older age groups, that's really relevant as well. And I was going to mention with preschool, it's also a time when they're discovering their own emotions. So, mm. you know, things that they're going to come across within families are going to affect how they feel. So you can... Like Jodie's book, The Worry Monster. Yes. You know, yes. we're working on a book at the moment and Jodie talks about if your child is worried about going and trying new things. And the book is all about how to be brave. And the book's called When Wally Gets Brave. And it's a fantastic book to introduce children on how to deal with their emotions. So, yeah, there's definitely room for um, these types of books out there in the preschool and a slightly older bracket as well. I know Alexa will probably be discussing those as well. So Yes, that's interesting, Wally the Worry Monster. You don't have to make your characters people. They don't have to be children, human. They can be toys. They can be animals. They can mm. be creepy crawlies. Um, yes, <laughs> you know, even creepy crawlies in, in picture books can look quite cute. Yes. Like the very hungry caterpillar. Yes. Um, if you give them human characteristics, then children can identify with them, mm. which will help them understand their yeah. own people. Yeah, yeah. And then in your writing, the vocabulary that you use has to be age appropriate and your sentences need to be just short and sweet. It, it's fine to have a few longer, more complex words as that helps to build vocabulary. But Basically, your story has to be understandable and engaging, and it has to make an impact on the first reading, or it might not be picked up again. A good technique with books for very young children that I've found in, in preschool books that I've written is to come up with a repeated phrase. So that then becomes a kind of hook into the story. And as children become familiar with the book, being read to them, they'll wait to hear that phrase. They'll start to join in with that phrase. And again, that that helps the book's rhythm and flow and structure, but it also helps children to perhaps begin to recognise those words. OK, then the next category is the five to eight year olds. Now, in this group, you're aiming your writing towards children who can now read to a certain extent independently. Their understanding is growing, their imaginations are developing. And this is where books can start to be a bit longer. So your word counts can be as few as a thousand for the five-year-old end, but and perhaps those who are, are struggling more with reading, but they can go up to 3,500, even 5,000, I would think. Um, and you can start to introduce chapters. 
So there are natural breaking points for a reader in a longer book. Um, and there's also room for your story to move about a little bit more than it can in a picture book. And chapters can also give a momentum. So depending how each one ends, they might spur the child to read on more anyway, you know, and stop reading under the bedclothes at night instead of lying down and going to sleep. Even with the longer length, the vocabulary and the sentence length and the structure, they still need a lot of thought. Short sentences mean a reader won't get lost in the middle of a sentence. The simple vocabulary means they won't lose interest. And, and writing like that is actually a real discipline. Again, with this age group, you still get illustrations, but not necessarily the full color illustrations across the page. They're much more likely to be black and white line drawings and not on every page. And they'll be far more incidental to the story than the illustrations in a picture book. And again, if you browse the shelves of your local bookshop, that'll give you an idea of popular story subjects in this age group. You'll notice that series are starting to be introduced, you know, series of books, multiple books featuring the same main characters, but with these ever-changing plot lines. When my children were little, I don't know how old these books are now, but because my children are grown up, but they love the Animal Ark series by Lucy Daniels. And if you can create characters and stories that children adore spending time with, as a writer, you're really starting to foster in them a love of reading. And this brings in the lovely Mushroom Marvellous, obviously, <laughs> Ink Cap. So Alexa and I worked on another children's book, which again, I'll give you show notes to, is um, Kylie Dixon, who we're going to be interviewing at the end of this series. And she has produced the most fabulous book called Ink Cap and the Nethers. And it's all about mushrooms and the different types of, there's an earthworm, and then there's the stinging nettles that are the baddies. And she's created this whole host of gorgeous characters, and she's already working on her second book. And I mean, the response of children reading the book is amazing. I mean, you've seen the photos, Alexa, as well, of all these, these, these children reading the book. And it's exactly as you said, it's interspersed with line drawings that she's done that are fabulous. So we'll be talking to Kylie, uh, as I said, in episode eight of this series. So. Okay, then oh, I was just going to mention, I think this is an age as well where you can start if you want to write nonfiction. I'm not going to really be looking at nonfiction um, in this episode, but if you want to write nonfiction, these type of early reader books are where you can start to introduce I can remember my, my son had one. It was all about going to the garage, which was great for him because he was mad about cars, still is mad about cars. Mm. Um, then you move on to the nine to 12 year olds. And this is also known as middle grade uh, fiction. And here your word count leaps up between 30,000 and 50,000 is probably about right. So, so that is a big leap from the previous category. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a big difference between a nine year old and a 12 year old. So for the younger end, you could maybe drop your word count to about 20,000, depending on how you feel you can develop your story. But certainly you should be aiming really for between 30,000 and 50,000 words. And there's also going to be a, a variance in subject matter. At the lower age end, you might still be using magic and fantasy. Those things are still really important. And humorous books with sort of larger than life baddies that always get their comeuppance. But as children move through this age group, uh, going back to what Alexa too was saying, um, even in the preschool age group, as children move through this age group, nine to 12, their awareness of the realities of life is also growing. So environmental issues, as you say, children in serious illness and, and even death. I mean, if, if you think of the many books of Jacqueline Wilson, these are the mainstays of her stories. And I think that's important because as children grow, they're going to come across all sorts of things. And if you're going through something, it can really help to read books where your own personal circumstances are represented mm. in. And then there's the awkwardness of growing up in general as well. So I find that diary books are fantastic for telling stories in this group because you get right inside the head of the central character to experience their ups and downs. And if you're having the same thoughts and experiences as they're having, it creates a real connection with what you're reading. I imagine a lot of you listening will have heard of Louise Renison, who sadly died a few years ago. I met her actually at a book festival and she was lovely, so warm and brilliant. And she created the um, Georgia Nicholson diary series, uh, the first one of which with the brilliant title of Anger, Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging. Um, <laughs> and then it just became a whole series. And she based Georgia's experiences as a young teen a lot on her own life. My daughter loved those books because they're so funny and 
painful and relatable and and I really enjoyed them too I read all of them if you want something that is really going to connect with your reader in that age group I would really think about a diary book because I think yeah. they make you've got people. um obviously the Adrian Mole series that were very popular when I was yes. growing up and then is it Diary of a Wimpy Kid? That Diary was of a Wimpy Kid, that, yes. That's my son who's now 16. That was his diary book. So it goes to show that each generation does have their diary, you know, stage or, or books that are out there that are diaries. So that's quite interesting that you should mention those sorts of series is a very good way of sort of un- teenage angst, I suppose, isn't it? It's how you yes. can talk about that, uh, basing yes. it obviously on your life. Um, or using your past experiences and you know what kids go through today with bullying at school and social media certainly I mean I didn't grow up with social media nor did you Alexa but I can imagine the pressures that certainly my son's going through with his you know he hasn't really got onto the social media scene but I, I know there are lots of children his age that have and the pressures that come with that so there's lots of scope for books that can help especially at that age where children are possibly buying books to sort of identify or how to make themselves feel better. So it's a great, a great category to write for, for sure. And then finally, I'll just talk briefly about the teen and the YA, the young adult category. Now, this is another very broad group because obviously there's a world of difference between a 13 year old and an 18 year old. And at the younger end, there can be this overlap between this category and the previous one to the middle grade, I think Louise Renison could fit very easily into that very, into that teen category, the, the beginning part of it. So when you're thinking of writing this category, I think it's important to know exactly which end that you want to write for, where you want to place your book within it. At the younger end, word counts would be nearer 50 to 55,000 and probably featuring teens who are a couple of years older than potential readers is a really good idea because children and teens, they like to read about children and teens just maybe a couple of years older than they are because they're starting to want to grow up themselves and have their own independence and they can kind of live that then through the central characters of the book and it it gives them something to aspire to but as you move up through YA through that category so the word count can grow so you're looking at more full-length adult type Mm. novel really so 70,000 to 90,000 words and the stories can become more complex So there might be more than one story thread running at the same time and you can start to introduce subplots. Uh, Themes, they still need to be relatable by teens, but you can start to deal with some tougher stuff as well, you know, real life issues. And even if the reader isn't experiencing those themselves, it's very likely that they're going to have friends who are going through those things. And I think as children grow and they become aware of that stuff, it's important for them to be, to see that reflected in what they're reading. You know, they know what the world is like. They're starting to know it's not all happy endings and they want to read books that show an understanding of that. There's also a lot of opportunity for dystopian and fantasy novels. A few years ago, it was all vampires, wasn't it? In fact, I think that's- Zombies. Was, fiction. Yes. Yeah. And, and vampires was such a trend. And then The Hunger Games is another one by Suzanne Collins that springs to mind and was just huge for a while. My niece has now moved on to reading those and she's she's only 14 this year. So it just shows how these ideas can, can spread throughout the category. It doesn't have to just be the older ones that are reading the more challenging material. And central characters as well, they need to be other teens. Teenagers don't want to be reading about a completely adult world. So those characters need to be quite peripheral, I think. And they also want diversity in their characters in terms of ethnicity, genders, sexuality, disability. Diversity is an incredibly important element now for young people these days to be reading books that have an authenticity in the author's voice. So I think if this is a market that you're interested in writing for, it helps to remember that adults can enjoy YA books as well. And that really is the kind of level you're pitching at. The story needs to be fast moving, can't afford to drag its heels. Teens are used to the immediacy of the way of, of the way of life that we live now. You know, everything is bam, 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 like that in the writing style and in the pace. Well, I've gone on and on. There's a lot to talk about. And it's really important, I think, to know who you're writing to. Are you writing to the adult that's going to be reading to the child or are you writing to the child? Because it's a very different style of writing. And do you want to go classic? Do you want to go slightly more environmental issues, slightly off piece, so to speak? So I think it's really important that you need to know your point of differentiation. It's a very tough market, like Alexa once said at the beginning. 
So you need to know why would someone want to pick up this book? What is different about this particular book that isn't already available? There's tons of information in this podcast about uh, what you need to do before you start and really key on exactly who it is you're writing to. And uh, we'll be uh, talking next week about the writing process, ideas and where to get them, and also a little bit about how you can research. So again, probably another information packed episode next week. (laughs) So for now, it's bye bye from me. And bye bye from me. Thanks for listening.